In this video, we're gonna take our rough forged 416 stainless and start turning it down into a beautiful guard for the stiletto. I really enjoy milling and lathing away bulk amounts of material. It's kind of why I wanted to do this turn down guard in the first place. I'm using a cutting tool to divide the metal and leave about a quarter inch in the center. And right there, the cutter caught onto the metal too hard because it was kind of a bad shape and it got really hot. It kind of bent something on the guard and made it so when I chucked it back up that it was wobbling a little bit, but I had plenty of material to true it back up again. I have a small template and I'm kind of using that as a little bit of a guide for how I want these quillions to look on the finished guard. I'm cutting down the ends and shaping them closer and closer to the way I want them to look. You might notice that I have all the tooling on the back side of the lathe instead of on the front, and that's so we can see everything a little bit clearer with the camera. Because of that though, the cap on the live center keeps coming loose because I have everything in reverse, and no matter how tight I seem to get it, it keeps coming loose. I need to use a little Loctite or something on that thing. I want a little groove right where the quillion meets the kind of rectangular part of the guard where the knife blade will be. So I rough it in with the die grinder and then I clean it up with a file. I have to be really careful here though because that rectangular part of the guard isn't round and it can catch the file real easily when I'm filing right up against it. And it actually did catch it one time and shatter my file into like three pieces and threw one of them right at my chest. So be aware that that can happen. Wear safety glasses and make sure that your hands aren't gonna get caught into the workpiece if your file does get caught and breaks off. I fine tune the curves on the quillions with the Dremel tool just stacking up some cutters to make a thick cutter. And then I use a Kratex type silicon wheel to clean up the coarse grit from the cutting wheel. The next thing I need to do is dish out the ends of the guard. It needs to be dished out because I'm gonna set a blued steel ball on each end of the guard. So it kind of needs to sit down into a little pocket. I can't do it on the lathe because I only have a three jaw chuck and the only place to grab it is the rectangular center area right now. But for that, I would need a four jaw chuck in order to hold it centered. So I go ahead and use the high speed dental burr and the microscope to dish out the ends of the guard. I've spent hours staring at this guard trying to figure out how to progress. I want these really cool little balls on the ends of the guard. The main part of the guard is stainless steel and then I want those balls to be blued steel so they'd be shiny, shiny black and I think it would look super cool with that shiny stainless steel and then the same thing on the pommel probably too. What you're seeing now is I've got this guard super glued to a parallel perfectly precision ground piece of steel for the milling vise. And I was having a hard time figuring out how to clamp it up in the milling machine vise because the way I want to fasten these little balls on the end are to have some little pins in the ball and then have it go down into a hole on the ends of the guard, but I had to fasten it in there somehow. I can't clamp it in the lathe and get a perfect centered hole these quillions coming off the edges are a really strange shape and I can't clamp them in the three jaw chuck I have. So what you just saw me do under the microscope with the high speed dental burr was scoop out the inside of that on the ends of the quillion and that'll let those little balls kind of sit down in there and rest in place. So my process to get these holes into the quillions nice and straight are to clamp this assembly up in the milling machine and use the parallel to get it square with the milling machine. 
Then I'll take the little ball, put it onto a 16th inch drill bit and line it up with that little dished out area on the guard. Get it all lined up as close to perfect as I can. Once it's lined up, I'll put a little pressure on it, put some super glue on there, and then take the ball off of the milling machine. And then the ball will be super glued to the guard and I can use that as a guide for the hole going down into the quillian. I've got a super cool cutter I made that pretty much makes these little balls in one cut. I was totally inspired to make this cutter from watching ClickSpring because I see him making a lot of these formed uh, cutters. Coffee break. <clears throat> mm. Were you recording already? Mm-hmm. Don't make that part of the coffee I break. I might. Don't. Serious use face. This. <laughs> you never Don't. know. I will come over in the middle of the night and put a wild oh, raccoon yeah. in your trash can and it'll get all over the house. <laughs> One more thing I want to mention. I had to figure out a way to clean up that little recess where the ball's gonna sit. So I could get it close with the high-speed dental burr, but I couldn't really clean it up with that. So I took this small stone for the Dremel tool and shaped it to have about the same shape as one of these little 5 16 inch balls that I was making. This parallel is super glued to the guard and it's super glued on there nice and square. So I can come in here and put this parallel going the other way and just tap it down until it's even across there. And then clamp it tight. And now the guard is nice and square with the milling machine, relatively. It doesn't need to be perfect for this, it just needs to be close because I don't want the hole to come out the side somewhere in here. There we go. There's a nice sixteenth of an inch hole that goes in about three eighths of an inch deep into the quillion. This is the ClickSpring inspired cutter that I made for the lathe. I cut out this slot for the five sixteenth inch ball with a five sixteenth inch mill bit and it has a little bit of a relief on it. Another problem that I'm running into that I've got to overcome somehow is I need to drill a hole into the ball about three quarters of the way into it and it needs to be a nice precision hole that's just under a 16th inch so we can get a press fit when we go to stick the pin into the ball. One more thing to note about this cutter I made, it's some kind of high carbon steel that I had laying around the shop. I'm not really sure what type of carbon steel, but when I heat treated it, it got rock solid. The file skated off of it, no problem. And then I went ahead and tempered it back. The main shank is tempered back to a blue color and then the very cutting edge, I just tempered back to a light straw color. I spent a bunch of time making these little balls for the ends of the guard. The reason I didn't turn it all down from one piece is because these are mild steel and we're gonna gun blue them so they'll be jet black on the finished knife. So the balls have a little pin in them that's press fit in. So it fits on there super tight, like that pin would probably break off if I tried to get it out. And then it goes down into the guard nice and deep. And it sits down in a little tiny channel that I've carved out into the end of the guard. 
and I'm gonna use Loctite to hold it in there when it's finished. And I wanna be able to remove them in the future so I could just use a torch and apply some heat to remove them if I ever need to touch up the bluing on the balls. All right, I've got a bunch of stuff I need to say about what's happening right now. I originally wanted to fit the guard up to the blade all by itself with no spacer or anything. I spent a day trying to get it to fit. It's a really complicated shape because of that fuller and because of the deep hollow grinds. And I was actually not able to get the guard to fit up the way I wanted. So instead of starting over on the guard, I decided to put a small thin spacer in front of the guard and try to fit that up. So that's what I'm working on right now. I'm just using some eighth inch stainless steel. And if anything, it'll only add to the knife when it's done because I'm planning on making it really thin and it's gonna be an oval. And I think it'll add just another layer of dimension. The problem I was having with the quarter inch thick guard was that it was a quarter inch thick and I was just having an incredibly hard time getting that shape of the deep hollow ground uh, cross section with the fuller to match up and fit just perfectly. I got it fitting really well, but then it wasn't centered. So by the time I got it centered just right, it was it was messed up pretty badly. So that's why I'm doing the small spacer in front of the guard, to hopefully get it fit perfectly the way I want. And like I said before, it's only gonna be an upgrade on the finish knife because it's gonna have an extra cool spacer there in front of the guard. The stainless steel piece I'm using is about six inches long and I just left it long right now just so I could hang on to it and clamp it in the vise and everything easier. I'm fitting it up the same way that I would fit a guard normally, even though it's just gonna be a small spacer. The reason I have the guard on there as a backer as I'm hammering the spacer on is so it evenly distributes the pressure from the hammer blows. Since that spacer is gonna be thin, I don't wanna bend it. Even though it's an eighth inch thick right now, I could still end up bending it as we're hammering it on. So having that guard on there acts as a really nice washer to kind of spread the pressure out a little bit. This is by far the hardest guard fit I've ever done. The sword I made earlier this year was the hardest, but this one just took it up another level. Even though it's really small, it was really difficult because of that fuller that goes all the way down the tang. I didn't want a big gap where the fuller just kind of disappears under the guard. You see that traditionally on swords and daggers where the fuller just goes right under the guard and there's just a big gap there. I wanted the guard or the spacer in our case to fit all the way down into the fuller and make it look like the blade just grew out of the handle. I'm basically going back and forward between the anvil. I hammer the spacer on, check on how closely it's fitting, take it over, file on it, and uh, hammer it on some more. The stuff you see me doing with the punch is to kind of squish the metal around in areas where I need it. If I accidentally filed too much in one area, I can hit it pretty hard with that punch and, and kind of scoot that metal back over and get a second chance at it. I pretty much just repeat that like 50 or 100 times. File, hammer it on, check, file. I'm super happy with the way this new spacer fits up. I just have a little more tweaking to do to get it so I can take it on and off a little easier and then I can start shaping it down into a really thin little oval and it'll be a decorative plate in front of the guard. Guys, I just got a box in from Ukraine. There's actually a note from the postal service apologizing for the damage. I doubt it's damaged considering it is actually a vice. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Wow. <laughs> Big old beefy handle on there. Oh man, this is super cool. Ooh. What? What? <laughs> what? what is that? I just discovered something. Pulling this tape off here. It's got a Vader face on it. <laughs> I did not expect that. I was just peeling this tape and there's like, Lo and behold, Vader staring back at me. Ah, uh, another one. <laughs> That's cool. OK, 
can move this all over and position it however you want to. Thanks so much for this, ZN Knives. Definitely gonna make big use of it, and I love the Vader. In the next video, I'm gonna finally get to move on past the guard and start working on the front spacer and then fitting the carbon fiber block to the stiletto blade. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.